All right, today I have something kind of insane for you guys. With all the capabilities that AI has these days, music composition is now one of them. And this tool is very, very powerful and initially free to use. So really, you should give it a shot. As you can see, I've experimented with it quite a bit so far. And I'm definitely going to be using some of these songs in my own indie game. How easy is it and how customizable is it? Those are the two most important questions. So let's go ahead and create a track. It gives you a whole bunch of different pre-existing profiles that you can use. So if you want a cinematic solo piano song, you can use this one. If you want the Christmas song, you can use this one. But you can do something even a little bit better. You can come up here into the Influences tab and you can drop a MIDI or an audio file in here. So what you can do is you can come up to something like YouTube, and I'm choosing a song from Rayman 2 in this case. Just copy it over, paste that into a simple YouTube to MP3 converter, download it, and then once you have that downloaded, you simply drag and drop that MP3 file into here, and then do you know the key signature of your influence? I am musically not very gifted, so I do not. It has automatic detection. If you do, you can say it's A minor or, or whatever it is, right? So I'm just going to leave it on automatic detection, and I'm going to say uh, done. It gives you a preview of the audio file, and we can trim it if we want to. I'm fine with how it is. And then it's going to analyze this to try and understand this specific song. And as you can see, I've already done this with like a Hollow Knight song, a Kingdom Hearts song, a Final Fantasy song, and another Hollow Knight song. This will take nothing more than just a couple of minutes to do. And then you can start generating songs based on this as an influence. So it'll use similar instruments, similar composition, all that stuff. While we wait for this song to be analyzed though, we can also take a look at the generation profiles, because what we can do is I'll just show you the one that I've made for a couple of songs that I've done so far. We can open that up, and here we have a more fine-tuned control over what we want. So if you have a little bit more insight into music and music theory, which I don't, and even I made this one semi-manually. You can put in the dynamic range here, so do you want this to be very soft and very subtle? Do you want it to be very loud? And what range do you want it to be at? Do you want it to have a very big range? Or do you want it to have a relatively small range? The changes in tempo throughout the song, uh, the auto mixing, which I don't know why I have that set to off. You definitely want that probably to be set to on. You can even say the dB value, the the volume of every single instrument or, or track, rather. The time signature, so uh, you've got your time signatures, you've got your tempo range, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then development, there's a whole bunch of different styles called layers and development types, which you can choose. So we can have normal songs, classical songs, cinematic songs, Chinese, jazz, electronic, Deep House, Organic House, French, and so on and so forth. You can mix and match these to whichever ones fit what you want to do. And then we get to the interesting bit, because we have uh, the different tracks that will get generated in every single MIDI, uh, which are melody, harmony, chords, bass, extra, percussion, and ornaments. And unlike the one single song upload that we did before that's still processing right now, you can actually put in influences on a per track basis. So I can say the melody needs to be influenced by this song, the harmony needs to be influenced by another song, and so on and so forth. And even then, once that is done, it puts out this set of instruments that it'll start using. If you don't like one of the instruments that it picks, you can just swap it out for another instrument that they have and we'll get a little bit more into customizing after the facts in a little bit and then there's a very important thing here uh, for the emotion you can say it's calm it's excited it's fearful it's sad or tension so that's quite abstract but that's the thing with music right 
making music is a quite abstract art form to begin with because go ahead and try and explain what a piece of music does with words that's a very difficult task so i can't really fault them for having this the fact that they're using emojis for it though is a little doesn't make it feel particularly like a professional piece of software which to a certain extent i suppose it isn't because this is made for people like me who can't for a life of them make music but still want to have custom music anyway then we can just create a song out of this we can choose the key signature it will automatically do it or we can say any major or any minor or you can choose a specific key the duration the same for the free version you're up to three minutes which for most parts is plenty enough and then the number of compositions between one and five and while we were doing all that the Rayman song here has processed so now we can go to our compositions and create a composition we can pick an influence use an existing influence and pick this Rayman song then we can choose the ensemble which is the instruments that's going to be used the key signature if we want to change it from what the original signature of the song was and then we can select an emotion so let's make this set to tense the annoying part is unlike with the generation profiles hovering over these icons doesn't actually give you a tooltip with the emotion which is really again getting back to the fact that these are emojis and not words that's kind of dumb and then we can choose a duration let's go for one minute to one minute 30 and let's generate three of them so all we've done to make music here is import a song say the emotion that it should convey give it the length of the song and tell it how many songs it needs to generate then we just create tracks and we'll see it starts generating three new tracks here at the bottom which each will take a couple of minutes as well as far as i understand this is entirely done through the cloud so it's not even local on your computer which depending on your perspective might be a good thing might be a bad thing but I'll get back to you when these have finished generating and we'll have a listen to them and get a little bit more into the fine tuning aspects here. All right, so two out of three have generated now. Let's have a listen. I haven't listened to these at all yet, as you can see by the red icon uh, next to them. That's a good start. I specifically picked a Rayman song because it has a very distinctive style, the Rayman 2 soundtrack. And I wanted to see how well that kind of style transfer would work through an AI tool like this. If you're doing something a little bit more generic than, again, something that has a very distinct personality, it will be even better. So let's take a look at song number two. All right, that one actually got pretty close to the original song because this is the opening theme from Rayman 2. In uh, in style, it got pretty close anyway. Of course, it's an entirely new composition. Uh, let's take a look at the third one. Well, you get the point. Uh, we're going to dive a little deeper into the second song here because I think that's the best base to work off and it's going to require the least amount of uh, work. But really all these three we could make work. So we select this one and we go over to the editor and that will then start loading the piano roll editor. 
where we can see the melody, the chords, the bass, the extra and extra one, all on separate tracks, and they all have a couple of layers which are separate instruments. So wherever we see one of these blocks, the instrument that's listed here will play the notes on this layer. Which in the case of the extras, in both cases here, is uh, just at all times. But if we look at, probably the melody has a couple of different instruments where at times the bottom three here don't play at all. And the same here for the melody. We have three instruments at the beginning here, then we have during the bridge nothing, and then after that a different instrument picks things back up. So from here we can mess a little with the volume of every individual instrument. We can, if we go from pointer mode into pencil mode, draw in sections where we maybe want to have this instrument for a little bit here as well, and this instrument here. I honestly don't know if this is a good idea because I haven't listened to what every individual instrument is, uh, which you can do by soloing them so they only play that instrument on this track. The other tracks will still play, so we could mute all of those, and now all we're hearing is this one instrument on this one layer. So let's listen to that. All right, so this is a, uh, a choir voice. And maybe we don't actually want that, right? Maybe we want this one specifically to be something else. Well, we can pick whatever we want. So let's say we want that one to be a guitar and we want it to be a acoustic guitar. It's probably not gonna fit too well with this song, but just to show you. And then, Probably not banjo. Fingerstyle guitar. And uh, we're going to go for harmonics here. I think that'll sound nice. And that's a little bit of an annoyance with this. Is even though this is a MIDI file that should be able to play back in real time. It has some real issues playing when you change the instruments that are being used. So what you do is you save the changes. Then it will regenerate. Which takes a minute. With that new instrument. We want to mix and normalize, that's the best result. It takes a little bit longer, but it's worth it. We save the changes, and after a minute when we come back, we can now hear the guitar sounds. And in much the same way, we could draw in new notes as well, if you know what you're doing and you know somewhat how to compose music, this could be a great starting off point to generate a song, edit it around yourself, and make a good combination of AI-generated, handmade music. And actually, this tip, I, uh, I realize now, is the next and final point that I wanted to talk about, is that when you are happy with what you've generated, you can export it to use in whatever you like. You can export as a compressed audio file, so an mp3, you're used to that file format, a high quality, a WAV file, or even as a MIDI file. Meaning that, in fact, you can export the MIDI file out of this and import it into whatever software you might be more comfortable working in. And in a general sense, I do think that that is the best way for these AI tools to evolve, is not to just spit out a result and call it a day, but generate a lot of editable data that you as an artist then can work with. And that's what this does. So there's a link down below in the description for it if you want to try it out. It's entirely free. I would highly, highly, highly recommend working with this if you are not musically gifted like me, but even if you are very, very talented in making music, I imagine that while this might take some of the creative process away, it also probably saves you a bunch of work. If you are making a movie and certain characters have a light motif, that's not going to get generated through this. That's still something you're going to have to manually create. The link between narrative significance and the music is not something that this tool can give you. What it can give you is a unique and interesting background track for whatever you're working on. 
And as a small independent creator like myself, this tool is probably the most valuable thing I've come across in a while. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.